Hello friends and future friends. I want to talk today about the art of receiving criticism. This is a skill that can be learned and improved upon. Now, as a white middle class American millennial, I don't feel as though this skill is very well modeled in our culture. However, it is a vital skill for anyone interested in social justice and or introspection, self-improvement. This video is talking more specifically about the kind of criticism where we're told that something we've done or said is problematic, for lack of a less loaded term. Basically, if we want others to change their behaviors to reduce harm when we ask them, we must be prepared to do the same thing ourselves. I'd even go so far as to say that when we give criticism, being able to receive it ourselves will help us relate and empathize with the other person. So, when I receive criticism, there are different ways I can take it. The way I like to frame it is, something I'm doing needs to change, or possibly needs to change. However, the way a lot of people, myself included, often respond to it emotionally is, I'm a bad person. This is a dead end. Now, there's nothing wrong with feeling defensive. Your feelings are valid. Uh, it's just that when we're defensive, we are not at our best. And we are way less likely to rec like receive feedback. We're way less likely to have a reasonable conversation when we're defensive. Um, the question then is, how do we change that? How can we get around this? How can we learn to be less defensive and more open to having a conversation? I find a lot of insight and solace in one basic fact that I like to come back to a lot, which is our brains are booby-trapped. Now, this is a whole area of study I find fascinating the many hilarious shortcomings of the human brain. Our brains adapted through random mutation and natural selection over hundreds of thousands of years. And as such, even though they're somewhat intelligent at this point, are kind of just these collections of string and duct tape, um, smoke and mirrors, our brains are not good at knowing the truth, what's true at all. Our memories are mostly fiction. We see what we want to see. We take ourselves very seriously. We are little balls of instinct and emotion with a thin veneer of cleverness in very poorly designed and extremely vulnerable and temporary bodies. We brains do everything we can to form a coherent and consistent narrative of the world. We also instinctively form narratives that reinforce ourselves as good people. We have to see ourselves as good people, most of us. Anything that challenges that narrative of ourself as a good person will naturally, instinctively be met with a lot of resistance. So, one of the ways to feel better when you're feeling criticized is to remember that the other person probably isn't calling you bad. But further than that, I'd say try to let go of the attachment to being seen as a good person. It's way too simple a concept, and there's no real way to define it, because humanity is too complicated for that kind of binary. Instead, try to focus on becoming a better person through improving your behavior, improving your actions and your attitudes. Side note, unlike with capitalism, Constant growth is actually really good when it comes to introspection and improving ourselves. Another very common reaction when being confronted is to defend your intentions specifically. Chances are, you didn't want to hurt anybody. The thing is, if you've ever had anybody hurt you by accident, and you think about how it felt, you, you know that what's much more important is, like, what happened to you. Um... In other words, it's not really enough to say, I didn't mean to, or I didn't know. Although you can and probably should say that at some point because it is relevant in the larger discussion. Um, because ultimately when it comes to human suffering and well-being, what matters is the effects of our actions. So go beyond not meaning to, 
to actively meaning not to is what I advocate. You know, how people actually feel in response to stimuli. So for example, let's say we are in a kitchen cooking. We have knives, we're cutting vegetables and side by side and I accidentally cut you with my knife. So the fact that I didn't mean to in that moment is irrelevant to the fact that you need medical attention and also I was probably being careless with a sharp tool. So in that scenario, the appropriate thing for me to do would be to care for the other person, to care for you, take you to the first aid kit, help dress your wound, uh, and then also resolve to pay more attention to how I handle knives. Um, in that scenario, it would be kind of ridiculous for me to say, oh, I didn't mean to cut you, so stop complaining. You know, you'd be rightfully mad at me even if you knew I didn't mean to. You could still be mad at me, and you could still say, like, how uncool it was. And, like, um, and that's valid, because in that scenario, you were hurt, and that the effects of that action is what matters m first, in my opinion. Um, I think the intentions also matter. They matter second. As soon as the person who is affected is cared for is when I think you can talk about the intent of the person who did the harm. I can't speak for everyone, but when I offer someone criticism, even if it's somewhat heated or a little nasty, ultimately I'm not trying to condemn them, but instead offer them support in being a better version of themselves. If I give you feedback, and I think in a lot of cases when people give feedback, uh, my desire is not to condemn you. It's not to make you feel bad or write you off or cancel you. My desire and I wager many people's desires when they give feedback is to give you information and empower you to do better. Side note, I do want to mention and point out that there are a lot of fuzzy cases where like, it's hard to tell like, who is responsible to change, who, who should be expected to change their behavior because um, Sometimes people mutually claim harm. Sometimes people call each other out for social clout. Sometimes people can kind of overstate the case um, in their feedback. And I, I find this is often the case with people who have very real needs that are not being met, um, unmet needs. Uh, people can imagine oppression or start calling things slurs that aren't. Um, it gets hairy and those complicated situations uh, are outside the scope of this video. Suffice it to say that there are many simpler cases where everyone overall means well. And thinking of feedback in this way can avoid, at least help avoid, a lot of unnecessary hurt and division and help us work towards, you know, healing and understanding and being better towards each other. Stepping back a bit, I'd like to frame this whole thing as part of a larger effort in the pursuit of truth. As greater thinkers than I have said, I want to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. This includes self-knowledge. This includes a dispassionate assessment of our own brains. So in this light, feedback could simply be seen as data information that will aid us in knowing more about ourselves as well as those around us and how our actions affect them. And similar to data, when we're gathering information for a scientific pursuit, we understand that there are going to be occasional data points that don't quite fit. Like, sometimes people can give us inaccurate feedback. You know, sometimes people do project onto us or they imagine things. And if we only get feedback from one person that doesn't line up with everyone else, you know, we can kind of try to figure out the context there and see if there's a deeper insight. Um, but if you, if you open yourself up to feedback and you get similar bits of feedback from different people, you can see those as data points that you can plot on a graph. It's almost like using yourself as a scientific experiment, like trying different things with your own brain to try to hack it into being uh, you know, smarter and more socially adept and so forth. So, coming back to the focus of this video, what do you do? 
how do you actually receive criticism? What are some what is what are some things you can do to receive criticism in a positive and constructive way? Uh, so distilling it down, my advice is a couple things. Check yourself before you get defensive. Or maybe after you get defensive, but try to notice it. Remind yourself that you are probably not being personally attacked. Unless you are, in which case that is a whole different dynamic. Um, offer an apology. This subject of apologies warrants its whole other video, at least. But the upshot of that is, make it sincere and meaningful. Don't say, I'm sorry you feel bad. Admit that something you did caused harm. Remember that there is no shame in that. It's just part of being human. Basically say, I acknowledge a thing I did, did harm to you, and I'm sorry for it. And I think it's important to note that you can, you can do this kind of apology to someone without like carrying the implication that you've done something wrong or you've messed up or you're bad like i do this all the time like sometimes you know somebody sometimes somebody overreacts in my opinion you know but i still am like oh i'm sorry it did and i ask them i try to discover what they need and in my experience um when i respond that way in a sort of understanding and apologetic tone to when somebody has claimed harm that i don't like see or if i don't agree with as soon as I take that tone with them, they're almost immediately conciliatory and will be like, oh, I didn't quite mean it that, that hard. You know, it's like um, that sort of apology, which is simply the acknowledgement that something you did had an effect, even if you can't exactly be faulted, um, that has an effect of acknowledging another, another person's emotions. And when people's emotions are acknowledged, they really, really come around and get way more reasonable when their emotions and their, and their needs are validated um, and, you know, or, or, or met, especially. They, they, people really, really come around and get way more easy to deal with and a lot more conciliatory. So, um, again, that's a whole other conversation about, about apologies. You can try to catch or notice yourself in the behavior being pointed out. Um, the more you think about it, the more you're likely you're, you are to notice it. It can take a really long time. If you're being confronted about a pattern, likely, likely you don't see that pattern very well, or you only notice it afterward. So know that it's going to take several times, potentially, for you to catch yourself in the moment and do something about it. Um, perhaps ask those around you to point it out to you if they feel able. Um, but remember that that in itself is some labor on their part, and if they're not up for it, that's you have to respect that too. Cultivate a desire to reduce harm for its own sake, and place that above your own desire to look good. Um, cultivate a sense of self-worth around your ability to improve yourself. I do this, and uh, it feels great to continually improve myself. I continually get to feel better about myself because I'm learning and getting better. The side effect of that is, of course, looking back at myself from 10 or plus years ago and cringing a lot, but, you know, <laughs> that's what happens. Um, cultivate a desire to reduce harm for its own sake. Yeah, I said that. Uh, avoid hinging your self-worth on being seen as a good person, but try to become a better person, a better version of yourself. Um, and by the way, I, I, I try to avoid comparing people to other people unless I need to. Uh, for me, the only person I can compare myself to is myself. You know, I can only, you know, I can improve myself in measurable ways. Comparing myself to other people who have completely different sets of skills and traumas and background and everything else will only mess with you. Remember that good people can do bad things accidentally. All of us have some degree of antisocial behaviors, especially in this culture. The culture I live in practically trains us to be terrible. In the U.S., aside from like maladaptive intersocial behaviors, um, we are taught and modeled racism, classism, sexism, ableism. I mean, just list all the isms. And we're taught them before the age where we can even discern what we're taking in. Bad attitudes are snuck into our brain without our consent. 
before we have the mental development necessary to defend ourselves with critical thinking. Many of us are also indoctrinated into a religion, even the most benign of which can have far-reaching effects on young brains. Another way of putting this is that none of us is perfect, and never will be. We will always be accidentally harming each other, to some degree, often in ways where we can't even really be faulted. What's important, at least to me, is that a person has a conscientious desire to do less harm, that they show improvement over time, and that they receive criticism well. Also, it's important to me that people be able to give criticism well, because everyone has boundaries, and being good with boundaries is both about setting your own and about respecting other people's. To finish up, being told that something you're doing is harmful can be really hard to hear. Any kind of criticism can feel like a personal attack, but I think we can learn and recondition ourselves to appreciate criticism and even thrive from it sometimes. I personally thrive from well-placed and thoughtful criticism. And the more of it I hear from people, the more I get the impression that people feel safe being honest with me, and personally, I love being trusted and confided in. So when you're good at receiving feedback, I think you will see the quality of your relationships improve a lot. Because we need to be receptive to each other in ways that bring us together where we can lift each other up. So that's the end of this video. This is the first video of this kind I've made. Um, I've got a few more in my mind, sort of, that I've been thinking about for a while in the general theme of how do we treat each other? How should people treat each other? I'm especially interested in learning how to treat each other within groups. You know, I'm in several different, you could say, political blocks and seems as though all of them are plagued with uh, people who don't always know how to treat each other well, you know, um, and it's not because people want to hurt each other, it's because, usually because we're hurting, you know, when we lash out at somebody or, or whatever, it's, it's often expressing a hurt that has nothing to do with that person. So, and I think for any political movement of any kind to be coherent and effective, we all need to be continually improving ourselves in how we interact with each other, how we treat each other, um, in order to be effective and in order to keep political movements going, in order to keep steam, go in, in order to gain and keep steam. Um, the, the components of a machine or the components of an organism, the organism being, say, a political movement, they all need to be working functional in, in of themselves as well. All of us individuals, no matter what we're doing out in the world, we need to learn how to be functional. Um, we need to relearn a lot of things that we were wrongly or badly taught in this culture. And we can only do that by receiving feedback and being good at receiving feedback. If you, if you change it from me versus you to more of a us versus the problem, that's where that's where some real change can happen and some real deepening of relationships can happen and where ultimately can be very, very gratifying. So hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to please like this if you liked it. Um, and please offer me any sort of feedback, you know, any kind of, um, if you like this, if you like the ideas, please tell me what you liked m most. If you feel like I left something out or made a bad assumption or missed something or, or uh, got something wrong somewhere, uh, I'd love to hear any thoughts. Please be nice. Um, please subscribe if you want to see more of this, more subscribers and more engagement. Gives me encouragement to do content. Um, and feel free to share this with people you think might need to hear it. You know, I want, I want these messages to go out to people. I've I've synthesized a lot of thoughts from a lot of different areas and experiences and. I think I have some things to offer here, so if you feel like this video has something to offer to someone else, please feel free to pass it on, and uh, enjoy this outro music. 
uh, composed it myself. Check out my music channel, uh, which I'll link. You can uh, subscribe to that one too. Okay, 